I wanted to start by um, just telling you how I prepared for today. Um, it forced me to actually get into an area that uh, I don't usually make time for. And that's how did I get here. I don't know about you, um, but I spend a lot of my time juggling multiple balls. Um, you know, helping other people to do things, driving different parts of the agenda. It's all about today and also all about tomorrow. Making sure that we're anticipating how we need to change and, and putting things in place. So it was actually quite difficult for me to spend a little bit of time just kind of reflecting. Um, it was also difficult from a point of view of actually having to acknowledge the fact that I've turned from being a very brash teenager and a bit of a pushy career woman into being a bit of a, uh, an old wrinkly, frankly. <laughs> I, I have, I guess, I need to admit it, I have been working for more than 30 years, so um, uh, that's something that there's a certain inevitability about that. But nevertheless, um, it, it suddenly made me realize just how rich uh, my experiences have actually been and how it actually can be a real source of energy um, um, in terms of how I've actually got to where I am today. And if I characterize my career, I would um, I'd break it into three parts. There's me time at the start, when I was actually uh, getting into my career and everything was a possibility and I was going to conquer the world. And then there was he time, which is um, when I um, uh, had my son um, and I was off on maternity leave. And then was followed by another he time when I was actually supporting my husband um, who was trying to set up his own business. And I'll come back and talk about, uh, about that. And now I feel it's our time. Um, and, um, uh, and I just want to just take you uh, briefly through, through that journey. And I hope that I leave you with some messages that might actually resonate for you. So, I'm an accountant. I'm sorry, but that's another thing I have to admit. Um, and it's a little bit ironic um, um, because I remember very vividly having the conversation with my father when I told him that I was going to train to be an accountant. Up until then, um, my father, like many men of, of his generation, and I suspect this is something that will resonate for a lot of you, he ruled the household. Everybody was there to support him. I have a brother. My brother was the one that was meant to be, have all the energy put into him. He was the one who was going to take the family forward. Unfortunately, I was the one with the brains. <laughs> so my father had to slightly adjust his, um, uh, his, his, his thinking. And his view was, okay, use those brains. We're going to get you into the best university. We're going to get you to do a fantastic uh, degree. And then you're just going to just take off. And that world of academia is ahead of you. I was young enough and naive enough and, and you know, definite enough to think that he was right and to, and to follow in, uh, in those, uh, that, foot, that path that he had prepared for me. I found when I went to university that actually I didn't like the subject I was doing. Um, um, I was smart enough to be able to get through um, um, all of the exams, but actually university was a time for discovering myself, discovering my independence, discovering a little bit more about who I am. And I'm a bit of a rebel. Which is quite ironic when you say that when I say that I've actually spent most of my working career as an accountant. You don't tend to find many rebels as accountants. Um, um, I, you know, I I had for a period of time. Luckily, there's no photographs to, to to bear witness to this. But I actually had blue and purple hair. 
I had a Mohican. I wanted to stand out. I wanted to be different. And the reason why I mention that is because that is what took, took me on the path. That is what gave me the, the courage, the confidence to actually say, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to break that cycle. I'm going to break that paradigm. Um, and and it, took, it took some courage. My father was beside himself. I felt at the time that he was being very arrogant. I realize now that he was trying to save me from myself. He, he says, business is a man's world. It's a man's world. You'll be eaten alive. You won't like it. You'll be squashed. And then I told him I was going to become a, an accountant. He thought, I thought he was going to have a heart attack. Um, yeah, he's like, accountants is boring. I deal with accountants all the time and they're all boring. On that last point, I have to say, I agree with him. But I have, I've made it my, uh, my role not to be defined by those stereotypes. So I've actually, as my uh, career has progressed across five different markets, four different continents. I, I, my, my role as a finance director is just gives me a seat at the table. It gives me an opportunity to have a license to hunt and fish anywhere in an organization, to get involved in, in marketing activities, to get involved in if, uh, helping people to think about what sales promotions we're going to do, to understand What's going wrong with a supply chain? That's what I find found all very interesting. Um, and the and the accountancy was simply the language in which I was actually able to uh, that I was using in order to be able to do that. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Um, I wanted to say a couple of words about uh, about my mother um, because um, I want to acknowledge the fact that um, whilst her path was very, very different from mine. Um, I wouldn't be where I am today without her. So, you know, she was very traditional. In the 60s and 70s, that's what you did. You were stay-at-home mums. No ifs, no buts. I remember vividly um, rows between her and my father when she tried to actually suggest that she get a, a part-time job. He found that an affront. What will the neighbours think? Um, but he didn't realize the fact that she was craving stimulation, craving social interaction. It wasn't that she wanted to achieve. It wasn't that she wanted to uh, um, make him feel undermined in any way, shape, or form. It was just to give her something to think about, something to channel her own energy. Um, and, and I don't think he ever really appreciated that. Um, and I didn't appreciate her skills until such time as I actually became a mother. Um, I um, had, as I characterized you early on, I had that period of me time. In that period of me time, I got to become a finance director for a multi-million pound business in the UK by the time I was 29. Um, needless to say, I did not take my career break before that. I focused totally, systematically on how I was actually going to um, achieve my A. Um, and then since, since the age of 29, until uh, most recently when I came in India, finance director has been in my title. Does that mean I haven't progressed? I don't think so. Um, um, but it's just that, that some of the, um, uh, the motivation that drove me to that point changed. I went into a business at 29 where I was the only woman, not just in the leadership team, but in terms of any of the management. There was no one, absolutely no one, let alone someone as young as I was. Um, and actually, I have to say that ignorance was bliss. I just didn't stop to think about it too much. I actually just got on with the job. Um, and what I could see was an organization that was fragmented an organization of fiefdoms, an organization uh, that was full of traditions, paradigms that needed to be broken, and most importantly, actually bringing together. 
I was very lucky at, the, at that particular point in time. It sounds strange to say, but that business was making huge losses. And that meant my role as the finance director was particularly important. When I stood up on a stage like this, people shut up. People listened. Because they knew that it was either bonus or no bonus, or it was either job or no job for everybody. So they wanted to do, this is a business that, you know, literally people would turn off the lights to save that electricity um, because it, it, was, it, it, it was all those small things that needed to make a difference. Um, so it was, a, it, it was an immensely rewarding time. And then I, then, then I started looking for something different in my life and I felt it was a time to, um, uh, to, to have a family and I took a career break. Um, I did not feel, I am honest, I'll be honest with you, I did not feel supported by the company that I was working for at that particular point in time. They gave me the absolute minimum. They gave me a guarantee of a job back at, uh, um, 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 at the same level. They gave me statutory minimum pay. I couldn't pay the mortgage um, from the, after I, I had been out for more than about four months. I just couldn't afford it. Um, and so I actually had to go, uh, go back to work. But in that four month period, I had an absolutely fantastic time um, being able to bond with my son and reconnect with my mother. And that's where my mother comes back into the picture because I was reliant on her to show me, suddenly she's the expert, I know nothing. I didn't know anything. I didn't even go to antenatal classes before I had my, before I had my baby. I just said, Whatever, it'll be whatever it'll be, you know. You know, women have been having babies for thousands of years. How difficult can it be? So I did not know what to expect at all. Um, and she brought me down to earth and in a very, very supportive way. And taking that break from work, I initially felt almost heart, sorry, heart palpitations because the phone went silent. My world, in terms of the dependencies on me, had changed. I was suddenly in a space where my son was dependent on me and I didn't know what to do. And the work environment was just trundling along without me, perfectly happily without me. And, you know, was I going to actually have a, have a role to play there? Was I going to have any relevance when I went back? So in some respects, the fact that it, was, it, that it was only four months at the beginning, I felt was good, because at least I wouldn't have forgotten a lot of the stuff, and I wouldn't have, you know, people wouldn't have forgotten my face. But as I went on with that maternity, I realized that actually, there's a, an awful lot more to life than work. Um, and it was such a rewarding and enriching experience. And it made me change. It made me realize that actually, as a leader within the organization, it's about giving as much as it's about receiving um, or about actually the personal um, achievements that you make. So um, being a mother really has made me um, a different person in terms of being a people manager, in terms of being a mentor, in terms of being a coach. And those who work with me will know I spend probably at least 30% of my time um, in that space, and it's all because of that. So I say that because there are things that I learned in that career break that have actually made me a much more powerful leader today that I would not have gained if I had stayed in, 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 in the space. Um, I realize I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to bring you up to date in, term, in terms of being here. Um, and, um, and just to say, if you open up your world to the possibilities that come in front of you, um, you get reward, rewarded many, many times over. I was um, um, offered a role in Africa before I came here. I, me I initially turned it down and said I didn't want to work in Africa. Um, and I was persuaded to change, to change my mind. And it was a hugely hugely enriching experience for me. It was hugely frustrating um, um, because of uh, various challenges in terms of uh, the educational system and in terms of the systems and processes and the, um, the, um, the, the, the ethics, 
side of the, of the business. But to actually navigate that um, gave me a lot of confidence. So when I was asked to come here to India and set up a business from scratch, I jumped at the opportunity. I didn't even think twice about it. And it has been a hugely, hugely uh, enriching experience. I've, we've gone from uh, me being one employee sitting in a small room staring at a blank wall to a thriving business. We're now at 600 on our way to 2,000 people. We've done that in less than a year. So I would just leave you with, what, with one, uh, one thought. That um, I remember I started off by telling you that I was so determined to, 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 do, to defy my father. Um, unfortunately, my father has passed away, but I'm absolutely sure that he would be standing here being very proud of my achievements. And I have to say that without actually having had those clashes earlier on, again, I wouldn't be here. So, believe in yourself and get the right support from those who are around you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Tracy. Tracy, thank you. Um, it was extremely inspirational to hear about your journey and especially such a varied one. Um, I think everybody would agree that many times a woman's career is not just a vertical climb. Yes. It's a roller coaster ride. Yes. Uh, it's a jungle gym, lots of on-ramps, off-ramps. And thank you for sharing with us today.